What's up, guys? I'm Brennan. I'm joined with Trent, and this is Recall. What's up, guys? I'm Brennan. I'm joined with Trent, and we got a lot to talk about. It's been a little bit, so let's go ahead and just jump straight in, Trent. We got a lot of news in the League of Legends scene. Let's go ahead and start off with the Renegades news. All right. So back in season five, season six, everyone remembers the Renegades team. It was Monte Cristo's team, the caster from Korea. They were around pretty bottom of the barrel, not much to call home about, but they were kicked out of the LCS by Riot due to some management issues. Monte Cristo's in Korea wasn't actually running his team. He was letting Chris Badawi do it remotely, basically, from NA. Well, Riot kicked them out. A lot of people were upset by that. They felt like Riot unfairly ruled against them because they just wanted Monte Cristo out of the scene because he always said negative things about Riot. It was back mm-hmm. and forth. And Riot never really defended themselves, claiming they couldn't release anything because it would go against privacy. Well, just this last week on Twitter, former Renegade support Ramilia posted of how she how she was harmed by Chris Bodwey's management, how she was basically injured. So it kind of came out like everything that's happened, and there's been some back and forth on Reddit and Twitter and everything. Mm-hmm. Ramilia tweeted her claims. Bodwey got on and posted in his defense. Ramilia went after him. It's not necessarily that I want to draw attention to the issue of drama. I want to draw issue, or I want to draw attention to the fact that it seems like after all of this, despite the criticism Riot was given, they had made the right decision mm-hmm. based on player safety. I don't think Monte Cristo is at fault. It sucks that his team got kicked out of the LCS, but he was not responsible enough for the team. He put it on someone who Riot didn't trust for good reason, mm-hmm. and it just it's fair now that this is how it ended up. It's good that they were done with this cycle with franchising hitting it's Mm -hmm. funny to compare monte cristo and nade shot both personal both personalities in esports um both get their own team and then that's where the that's where the likeness stops monte cristo kept his career going in korea didn't even come check in on his team their entire career whereas nade shot is always at the hundred thieves house he's always doing something with his team he's always interacting with his players yeah I don't know if this is necessarily a franchising thing specifically. I think Nate Shot's just a good guy based on the content he releases. I do think a part of it is franchising, though. It's the heavy interview. It's the heavy emphasis on player mentality and player safety. So, mm-hmm. like I said, the drama isn't, or the thing I want to draw attention to isn't necessarily what happened. It's the fact that Riot didn't end up making the right decision with Renegades. And all in all, people who were claiming that Monte Cristo was screwed over not so much anymore. It doesn't make mm. much sense to say Riot is at fault for putting Monte Cristo in a bad spot. Yeah, so it's like one of those rare moments where everyone's like, okay, Riot isn't that bad. Yeah, they're not this super uber evil mega corporation. You know, mm-hmm. they're not. And I'm, I don't know. Monte Cristo said some inflammatory things, so it wasn't entirely crazy for people to think that. But now that this mm-hmm. has all come out, it's understandable even why Riot wouldn't defend themselves because. There were some very private things. If you're interested, you can look it up. I don't feel like I have the uh, right to spread or talk about it. That's fair. You yeah. can look it up. It's all been tweeted. But Riot, there were things that Riot would not say as a company. It would be very immoral of them. So mm-hmm. they made the right decision through and through. I have no doubts that they handled that the right way. Awesome. And you kind of touched on franchising, and some big news that's coming out of the EU region is EU franchising. So go ahead, hit us on that. Well, EU LCS announced their franchising this week, and basically it's going to be the same model as the NA LCS franchising, which was announced, or not, which was enacted this year. They're going to go into that in 2019. So they're going to have the same thing basically as that. They're going to have applications. They start in April, Mm -hmm. and they're going to pick final teams between September and November of this year. The buy-in is 10.5 million euros. And that is an insane amount of money. That's more than NA was. But the mm-hmm. difference is that NA, for established teams, it was $10 million. For new teams wanting to ask, apply, it was $13 million. So they kind of cut the difference, and every team's paying the same amount, and they're going to end up making about the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. So this opens the door for all these uh, football clubs that have been interested, like showing interest, like Schalke. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a few more getting in, even if they're not getting in by name alone. They'll maybe invest in other esports teams. Yeah. And this is going to probably kick out some of the lower quality teams, or at least Mm -hmm. some of the lower income teams. Teams like H2K and Unicorns Love, although H2K did make 
fin a finals run this year, they probably won't be in it unless they find a major investor. Yeah. Unicorns of Love probably won't be in it unless they find a major investor. And with a brand like they are, they're kind of just goofy. A team might or an investor might not want to put money into that. For sure. So we'll see a huge shakeup in EU again. It's a question of really who's going to be the EU Immortals. I remember everyone thought NA was going to keep Immortals, and they ended up getting kicked out. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to see who makes the cut and who doesn't. I want to believe that the teams that have at least been in the top five consistently would stay, but you never know. For sure, for sure. And with all this EU franchising, there's going to be obviously more money within the region, um, which obviously opens up to players getting more money, being able to have that more security, and it really becoming more like a job. Obviously, it's a job for them, but we're getting more professional, just like we spoke in Overwatch of how the franchising works. It's just all becoming very a big conglomerate of just not so corporate stuff but we're getting to that point where okay these guys are going to be held to a standard um as far as that goes what kind of possible roster changes do you think we're going to see in eu in general in eu um i don't necessarily expect to see many roster changes but mm. what i do expect to see is longer contracts okay. Rec uh, reckless is a revolutionary player in eu based on how long the contract is i think it actually is longer than any NA players but EU contracts are typically very short, and the mm -hmm. careers are very not short-lived, but on teams they're very short-lived because they're constantly getting poached by us people in NA. We constantly want a new EU player. Think Jensen, think Bjergsen, think Sven and Mithy bot lane that just came over here. Mm -hmm. We are constantly taking talent from EU, and that's because EU cannot keep up with NA salaries, especially after franchising. That's why we saw a huge influx of EU players. Mm -hmm. With them getting franchised, with them having more money, they're going to be able to defend their players much better and defend their rights to these players. So they're going to keep their strength as a region easier, and they're going to have even more development of rookies, which will be insane because they're already a top-tier region for rookies, but with more money going into it, they're going to have an even better experience with it. That's awesome. Definitely awesome to see just how so EU So sadly, is a, NA is going to lose some of their stealing potential, and mm -hmm. we might not be as strong of a region, but maybe we'll just end up stealing from Korea or China now. It's possible. It's I just don't see many EU players like Power of Euros or Zven and Mithy bot lane leaving EU for any reason because now they'll be on equal ground. They'll be on equal terms for money-wise. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think any of the players that are already in NA, <clears throat> do you think they're going to go back to EU, just back to their homeland, and since there's the money now and there's more of a stability? I do not believe many of at least the well-known players in NA will go back to Europe. Zven and Mithy just came here, and they've had a successful career in Europe. They probably don't necessarily feel like they need to go back. Bjergsen has had a successful career on TSM, and he's like a star NA player. There's no reason. He's an ace faker. There's no reason for him to leave. Thinking about it, maybe a player like Jensen would go back. He never really got his chance for a career in his home country. He never – he was banned, and then NA picked – or Cloud9 picked him up, and that's where he started playing. Yeah. So he may eventually say, all right, C9 isn't going to win Worlds at any point in time. I'm going to go play in EU for my own sake, just as an experiment to see if I like it. Mm -hmm. Other players I could see going back would be, honestly, players like Sven Skarin or players who didn't get their chance to shine in EU, but they do great here, and now that money is good, maybe EU wants them back. Okay. But, of course, that is uh, that is hoping that EU does want them back. EU might not need Jensen. EU might say, we have enough mid laners. We don't need you. Gotcha. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see how that, all that will play out. Uh, let's go ahead and transition over to more um, closer future things. Uh, what are some big roster changes that we might be seeing here soon, or confirmed <clears throat> roster changes? Well, one that the only two that have been confirmed is Optic is removing Zig and Elimination from their play from their active roster. Mm -hmm. So Zig, I think, is just going to be at the best put in their academy league if not dropped entirely and Lemonation is most likely going to be moved to a support staff role hmm. they already don't have a very um experienced coach in zabutin he was a french caster for a very long time and now he's in the head coaching role mm -hmm. and romaine who was the old unicorns of love manager you might recognize him as the guy who would go up on stage and dance around like a unicorn <laughs> for you know whole games mm -hmm. they don't have a very active coaching staff Elimination could fit that role very well as playing their real coach and player representative while those two help handle the more GM side of the esports division. So mm -hmm. with that said, we might see a new top laner picked up. I hope 
my goal, or not my goal, my hope is to see NA's top laners continue to grow. So we saw Licorice and Solo had a great split both in this season. Mm -hmm. Solo acted as impact light from season six and C9. He just absorbed pressure and let his team do all kinds of things around the map. Mm -hmm. He didn't carry, but he just took pressure and teams got nothing out of ta attacking him or very little of the best. So, and then Licorice had a great, you know, first half of the season, mm -hmm. basically rookie of the split almost for sure. And when the tank meta came around, he weakened somewhat, but even then he's still a rookie. Yeah. NA top laners are becoming not a meme anymore ever since Hansa came around and, you know, popped off and has been popping off consistently. Mm -hmm. So with that said, Team Liquid Academy's Viper seems to be playing very well. He seems to be playing at the top of his game. I don't think Team Liquid Academy made it to their challenge or to their finals in the Academy League. I still think he'd be a very good pickup for Optic to look at though. Mm -hmm. He could play that role. He could be developed and maybe maybe he'd be a stronger core for this team. Okay. I just don't see them importing another top lane because their imports are already Power of Evil, who they spent lots of money on, I'm sure, and mm -hmm. Arrow, who is still a top-tier AD carry as far as I'm concerned. He had a bad split last split, and this split he wasn't given much to work with. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Definitely interesting, and kind of like you Further said. Further than that, I don't expect many roster changes from other teams because mm -hmm. the whole point of franchising is that teams are supposed to be an investment. Mm -hmm. I don't see Golden Guardians changing their roster. I don't see FlyQuest changing their roster because right now they're still experimenting. For sure. Definitely, definitely. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and transition into just what's happening right now, the playoffs. <clears throat> well, speaking of how everyone's going to need to correct or continue their investments or correct their investments, let's talk about the teams that are already having huge payoffs. Mm -hmm. So in LCK, we have... King's Own Dragon just doing insanely well, leading their whole series, followed shortly by Africa Freaks as the second seed, then KT Rolster, and then bottom of the barrel for SKT playoffs, or not for SKT, for LCK playoffs at the very least, is SKT and KSV. KSV being the formerly Samsung Galaxy that just won Worlds. Mm -hmm. They are going to play each other this weekend in the first match of finals, and the way Korean finals work is it's a series of just two teams play and they play the seed higher and the winner plays the seed higher than them so king's own dragon basically the t first seed will only have to play one best of five to be the korean champion no oh. there are some pros and cons of that mm -hmm. king's own doesn't get to practice many games in this meta at least on stage but at the same time they don't have to show any strategies mm -hmm. they get to go in and no one knows what their main plan is yeah skt imagining they made it all the way from this bottom of the seed all the way to versus king's own dragon they'd show in three best of fives what their plans are for this meta hmm. interesting so there's some pros and cons to it i don't expect to be K or king's own to be worried i expect them to at the very worst three one whoever they face mm -hmm. in finals that team is so strong and so insanely good right now Khan has been proven that he can still play carries mm -hmm. despite the fact that it's a tank meta bdd plays a great supportive mid lane and he can carry too Prey and Gorilla are still insane, and Peanut has just been popping off. I don't expect anything else than King's Zone to win LCK and be representing Korea at MSI, and for them to win MSI because King's Zone is so good. There's seriously yeah. arguments that they are the best team in league history, better than any of the SKT iterations. They That's... play so well. If they do go to MSI, I will have no doubt in my mind that they are. That's yeah. It's definitely it's weird to think <clears throat> that too. That's it's like you would think that's a bold claim but like from their recent standings and results like they do look to well, be that good what is insane is the same iteration of team has basically been runner up for the past three years you think of skt how they had three world championships three years in a row you can think of this prey gorilla peanut core or at least prey gorilla core and then players around them just kind of alternating little bits here and there mm -hmm. they've always been people are thinking they're going to be the ones to win worlds each time rocks tigers back in season uh six was prey gorilla peanut um i believe it was smeb and i don't remember their mid lane off the top of my head everyone thought they were going to win worlds when they played skt in the semifinals of worlds everyone said that was the real finals yeah last season with long zoo when it was once again prey gorilla and i believe it was Khan at that point in time once again everyone thought they were going to win worlds they thought they were going to take it off skt and then 
Samsung Galaxy 3-0'd them in semifinals. Mm -hmm. I really hope this is the final time they need to do that, that they get it right this time, third luck's a charm, and they <laughs> don't get destroyed in semifinals because this team is very good. This core team is very good, and they have shown adaptation that they can keep working around. But I think this is going to be the strong consideration of not only that core team, but of any team in League of Legends history. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a crazy thought. Um, so do we know what's going on in the LCK region? What about EU? What are we looking like there? EU LCS is still the same old, same old. Everyone beats everyone, and Fnatic comes out on top. <laughs> Fnatic ended their um, regular season 10-4 and 4 with G2, I believe, being... Um, no, Fnatic ended 14-4, and 4, excuse me, with G2 being... Um, I believe it was 11-7. and 7. So there was a clear difference in their first seed and their second seed. G2 and Splice tied for the second seed, so they had to play a tie record in the regular season. Now this weekend, Fnatic plays Vitality, who started off the season great but had a major slump, mm -hmm. and G2 plays Splice. Like I said, they had a tiebreaker. So for that match is Friday, the G2 Splice game, that's going to be very close. I think it'll be a 3-2 G2's favor. I think that team just has too much legacy to not capitalize and do well in the finals, but I think Splice is going to make them work for it. Okay. And I think Vi Fnatic Vitality goes 3-1 Fnatic because only for the reason that Soaz announced that he was injured and they're playing Borpo, their top laner support, I think Vitality finds one game that they can take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. In every other game, they end up losing. I think Fnatic works around it. Mm -hmm. Borpo isn't a carry, but he's a very stable top laner from what I've seen in his few games. I feel like he can stabilize and make it so his team can carry him to victory. Okay. Very, very interesting. We'll see how all that they, plays out over the next few weeks. Yep, that happens Friday and Saturday. Uh, Saturday being the Fnatic Vitality game, Friday being the Splice G2 game. I I don't expect many upsets. I expect another G2 Fnatic finals. I expect Fnatic to finally capitalize the season and take their win, mm -hmm. but they've been in finals recently a lot, so I'm not super shocked. Okay, gotcha. All right, well, that wraps up EU. What about the good old promised land? The good North old America. promised land. The kings are dead. Long live the new king. Um, <laughs> so everyone thought the biggest upset would be Team Liquid 3 0 in Cloud9. Mm -hmm. And then Clutch Gaming took the stage and said, all right, we're going to sandbag this first game, and then you're going to let us pick Thresh three times in a row. <laughs> and we're gonna win off that. That was our that was our highlight play. Was champ select when we just kept picking Thresh over and over and over again. You didn't ban shit. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. How they let that through and how big of a carry Hakuo is. Mm -hmm. Everyone always says how underrated Apollo and Hakuo are as a bot lane. They better never be overrated again or underrated yeah, again. That just proved it. They performed insanely well under pressure. And what's insane about that is how. Clutch Gaming is reported as saying they had a terrible week of scrims. Like, their entire week was apparently just... They were questioning if they were even at the level of a professional team, much wow. less a finals team. So when they come in and just destroy the TSM legacy like that, it makes me very excited for the finals. Oh, yeah. So most importantly in this news is there will be a new banner in LCS no matter who wins. Mm -hmm. There is a new champion no matter what. If Team Liquid wins, if Clutch wins, if 100 Thieves wins, if Echo Fox wins. And there's a story with each of these teams. Team Liquid being the new Double Lift Immortals team that was blown up and launched out of the NALCS after franchising and Double Lift being kicked out of TSM, kind of this team of almost rejects. Mm -hmm. They they can win, and they can be the fourth in a new NALCS champion, perfect for the Liquid fourth meme. <laughs> like, it'll be perfect. Clutch Gaming, another team of underappreciated players, you know, Lyra, Apollo, Hakuo, Solo, Featherman being the only one who is really claimed to be a great player, mm -hmm. if they win, they cement themselves and they say, we were one of the best teams and no one valued us. Yeah, 100 Thieves win, it just shows how dominant Aphromoo is a shot caller. And finally, if Echo Fox wins, he's failed to take finals with Immortals despite how dominant he was in NA his very first season here. He comes back with Echo Fox and says, nope, this is my championship. I deserved it the first time, but I'm taking it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely a really, really fun storyline that's just developing. The whole weekend is going to be fun storyline. So Echo Fox and Team Liquid play first mm -hmm. um, Saturday, and the storyline there is that the two top laners are former SKT top laners, Huni and Impact. Ooh. 
And not only are they former SKT top laners, their play style are play styles are almost mirrored. Mm -hmm. Huni is this aggressive carry that calls for jungler assistance all the time and wants to take over the lane. And Impact is this player notorious for absorbing pressure and taking all that it is the enemy team has to throw at him and not throwing it back at them, but just taking it all in and letting his team do whatever they want over the map. Mm -hmm. So it's insane to see how this matchup might go because their styles not mirror each other, they almost complement each other so well. I'm curious mm -hmm. when an unmovable or when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, which is this top lane matchup, who comes out on top? Oh yeah. Whose team ends up benefiting from this play? And then a hundred thieves versus clutch gaming is going to be the two star supports, Aphromoo and Hakuo duking it out. That's also just gonna be very entertaining to watch. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm I might actually have to watch L C S this week. <laughs> <laughs> it will be very worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, these might be the best finals in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I say that as someone who watched TSM C9 Spring Split with the Jensen Echo, and that's the thing that makes me sad. But that was seriously one of the best series of five games I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to get top this weekend in at least one of these series. I can't not – I can't see these teams not just completely outperforming any LCS viewing before them. Mm-hmm. I got you. Yeah, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for uh, all of our League of Legends news. That was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this weekend. and uh, I'm looking forward to it, it too. Hopefully, hopefully teams don't let down because it would be really disappointing if they were just 2 3 O's this weekend. I'm really hoping <laughs> we don't see that. <laughs> just the most uneventful <laughs> weekend possible. We're just hyping it I up. I could see it happening in the Team Liquid Echo Fox game. Echo Fox just loses their first game, then tilts off the face of the planet, and then yeah. they lose. I don't see it happening in Clutch Gaming and 100 Thieves because I feel like both those teams with their just cores are untiltable. Mm -hmm. Aphromoo and Meteos compared to like Hakuo, Apollo, and Febvin. I've heard Febvin's like in-game calls and they're so funny. Like mm -hmm. in the Clutch Gaming TSM game, game two, his bot lane got dove and the, he was just like telling them the entire time he had teleport up and then he realized he didn't start the game with teleport. So his whole time he was telling his bot lane to stay under turret, I can TP, will win. And he's like, oh, wait, I don't have teleport. I'm trolling. And his team just shook it off and still won that game. Hmm. I don't know about you. If I was in that game and we were playing League and you made that call and that happened, I would be like, all right, FF, go next. I can't do yeah. this. Like, game's over. It's Cogma Thresh versus 4 Dive, and you just faked me out and said you could be there and you weren't. So this game's over. That's yeah, so, that's crazy. Especially on the, on the big stage, like that's <laughs> yeah, for real. That's untiltable teams will definitely make a very interesting uh, best of five. For sure, for sure. Well, I think we'll go ahead and we'll move over to a few, little bit of news over in Overwatch. Some fun stuffs going on in the past few weeks. Um, we'll go ahead and start it off. QCK, he's gone. <laughs> um, we won't go into the shenanigans of all of it. It was. I'm not going to so give an opinion on it. So when was uh, the QCK coming? Because I seem to remember a certain uh, Overwatch League fan saying over and over again that when QCK comes back and now that QCK is back, he would just help Dallas Fuel dominate the entire Overwatch scene. So what happened? Ooh, I, didn't say, I didn't say dominate. Did not say dominate. <laughs> I said they'd be better, and that did not happen. <laughs> the uh, Dallas well, Fuel are just... We'll have to go back and check the tapes. Oh, I will see. show you the but... I didn't say they dominate, <laughs> for sure. I know they're not that good. I don't know what their problem is. <laughs> they got a new tank, and they're still trash. So, <laughs> they actually... They were playing a little bit better than we've seen. About average still, but they're still real mad. But yeah, QCK's gone. Uh, the Dallas Fuel dropped him. He had some more controversy show up in his day-to-day. -day, and uh, Fuel were just kind of done with him. And... As far as I know, I'm pretty sure he's just decided to say screw Overwatch League. I he think can he... still play though, correct? As like far as I know, if he were to want to pick him up mm -hmm. for any reason at all, he can still play. As far as I know, he wasn't banned. He was probably fined. I'm pretty sure he's fined, but uh, I don't think he's actually banned from the Overwatch League. Dallas Field dropped him, and we'll see if another team wants to pick him up. He's kind of volatile at this point, as in marketing, because he's just kind of out there and. There's very yeah, few people. He's... There's some other stuff that happened between him and Monte Cristo that kind of even solidified him exiting. Um, Monte Cristo wanted to like just go to lunch with him and just kind of talk through things and like how he could recover, and he ended up canceling on Monte Cristo without like even telling him, and that started Ooh. some t Twitter drama as well. And it kind of got worked out, and they were like okay, it seemed, but it's just it's not looking in QCK's favor to come back. Maybe so. it's 
maybe it's what he wants though maybe he wants to stream maybe he wants to draw him in the attention maybe it's good for his career i don't know it definitely could be as long as he's happy on good on a good omen for overwatch league like people who draw that kind of negative attention you don't want him in your league that's for sure but so he's gone so qck bye bye it was fun to watch you you popped off a few times when you were actually playing like 30 the, of the yeah, time of the entire the quarter league, but... of the time that he was the <laughs> league was going and he was playing yes it was very entertaining sad to see him go we'll go ahead and move on past him uh, we got the fall of the houston outlaws man oh man yeah, is this just a, like texas disappointment why do you want to go to this state again <laughs> like, i was so invested this? in this team like dallas fuel failed me so i was like houston outlaws like i love some of their like rockus he's awesome um blinkser is just an insane dps um cool matt is just one of the best tanks i've ever watched like he's just so fun to watch and then there's um jake i'm okay with jake he's all right he's good dps but <laughs> Man. Jake's cool, yeah. And Jake's, Jake's cool. Kind of there. He's, yeah, I mean he's a great player, but he, he, yeah, but yeah, it's just like I was so I love all the players on that team. Muma, that's another one. He's a great tank player. Um, but it just it fell apart for him, and I don't really know why. And that's the thing is, it doesn't look like they're losing horribly. They're just falling apart when it counts, and they're not. They haven't been able to shift to this meta. The last meta being the Mercy Zen meta with the supports. Mm-hmm. Mercy was just OP OP and they were good there. But now we're moving over to a meta that involves Lucio. And usually Zen, we have a little bit of Anna in there as well. And all the other supports have adapted. A lot of the other teams like the Dynasties, the Excelsiors, a lot of other teams have these really great Anna players. They have really great um Zenyatta players as well as Lucio there's one player that literally I think his name's Boop yeah there's a player on I want to say the Valiant his name is Boop and it's because he's so good at booping people with Lucio like that's what his name is like meaning and that's he was like they had an interview with him and he was just like ecstatic that Lucio was coming back into the meta so it's definitely interesting to see but yeah the Houston Outlaws I mean within the past three weeks I think they only won like one or two games if I remember correctly, one or two games, one or two one or one or two matches. Sorry, their okay. map count wasn't very good either. But like, even we'll go and check real quick. Like week three, they lost to the Los Angeles Valiant 04, which is just Jeez. crazy, like absolutely crazy. Los Angeles Valiant really turned up though. I have to give them that. Los Angeles Valiant did very very well. Um, I have a question on that meta discussion you were yeah. bringing up. How they didn't adapt. Do you think the issue was maybe they just got a bad read on the meta change the first week of it? And since they got that bad read, maybe they thought Mercy was still something they could pull off. And since mm. they got that bad read, they were always just one week behind. So the week after when they said, oh, wait, Mercy isn't good. Maybe we need a change. They were just one week short of practice. Do you think it's something that they had a bad meta read, but they can correct by next stage? Or do you think this is something endemic to their player, to their roster, that they need to get a support that can play more roles better or i'm not play more sure characters better. i don't really think it was they definitely didn't try mercy i mean every once in a while a team will pull it out it's usually with a farah it's called the pharmacy Fair, or mercy will just stay on fair constantly um okay. mercy definitely still has a place it's just not as prevalent anymore um right. and honestly on most maps anna or zen or lucio are just as good if not way better lucio is okay. becoming really really prevalent um i just i don't think they have a really great lucio player yet um and they're not really adapting well to how the meta has to be played now because used to your tank could dive in as long as your team followed that tank would be rezzed easy peasy and it was over now you can't do that you have to be a lot more careful and precise with those dives yes. and they were definitely a dive comp most of the time uh they would play um Linkser on either Tracer or Widow. He just kind of sit in the back. They put Matt, or sorry, not Matt. Um, what's his face? Jake, that guy. Uh, they put him on. He's a really, American he's, first name. Yeah, I know. They put him on Junkrat, so he'd just kind of sit in the back and just throw grenades in as like his team jumped in. Mooma and Cole Matt would play these dive tanks. Rockus would just be healing from behind, and then they had the whichever support player they had. Um, either spree or i'm sorry not spree what was his name boink that's it um 
but yeah, it's just it's not falling together with them. And if we look back, let's see the schedule here, not schedule standings. Stage two, not standing schedule. Yeah, that was right. Sorry. So yeah, stage two, like week two, we already discussed. Oh, no, I'm sorry, week two. Uh, they lost to the Fusion, and then they lost to Excelsior 04. Week three, we talked about it. they lost to Ethalia 04. They beat the Mayhem, if I remember correctly. Let me see. Yeah, they beat the Mayhem, but they only beat them three two. It went to five maps against the Mayhem. Oh. The Mayhem, mm. which Mayhem have been getting better. I'm going to give them that. Mayhem have actually done really well in this meta, surprisingly. Um, after that, they lost to Los Angeles Gladiators, 3-2 in five maps. And then they lost again against San Francisco Shock, which Shock got Sinatra, so Sh Shocker coming up. But, like, when does this end? Week five, thank God they beat the Shanghai Dragons. Oh, boy. They didn't that lose to that team. Up, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what player it was. I think it was Cool Matt was like, or maybe it was Muma. It was one of those two. They're like, we're not losing to a team that hasn't won yet. We're not going to be their first win. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Um, they actually... I feel bad for whoever does lose to the Shanghai Dragons oh. first. Even if the Shanghai Dragons improves, mm -hmm. that first week of losing to the Shanghai Dragons, I mean, like, oh, my God, that'll be heartbreaking. For yeah, that for sure. For it. For that team that does lose would be great for Shanghai Dragons, I'm sure. And like I said, even if even if Shanghai Dragons improve that like stage and they end up looking like a really good team, mm -hmm. that first week before you know that, where you're just like, we just lost to Shanghai. They haven't won a game, and now they just won their first one on us. That'd You'll be just basically become the meme team of the entire team. league after that. Like Shanghai's the meme team right yeah. now. That will they will transfer that over to whoever they beat. It doesn't even matter if they don't win another game as long as they beat one team. You are now the meme team. But yeah, they actually had a little trickle of light. They beat the Soul Dynasty three one in their last match of the uh, stage two. So, and this kind of talking about Dallas Fuel or not Dallas Fuel, Houston, Houston Outlaws, Outlaws right? Houston Outlaws, yeah, Houston Outlaws three one Soul Dynasty. The, their very the last. Match. I I thought we were the transition there was just kind of sudden. I thought we all of a sudden were moving to Shanghai Dragons, and I was going to be completely <laughs> blown away. No, sorry. So yeah, we're I, still I, on I Houston Outlaws. Yeah. Houston Outlaws beat the Soul Dynasty that very last match which actually put the Dynasty out of the playoff runnings. And that's where we'll transition into what happened to Dynasty missing playoffs again. Like, yeah, they're they one of the top teams. teams. They're, never lucky. It's, it's insane. So throughout the entire season or stage, they were one of the top three teams, if not top four, just depending on where the outlaws, but the outlaws fell out eventually, and that's when Dynasty took their place. Um, right. They just had some bad, bad losses. I mean... Losing against the Outlaws in a very, very broken state of the Outlaws. That's rough. Uh, week 4, they lost against Excelsior. That's not that bad. Uh, they got 0 4 would by one Spitfire. That's pretty bad, but, I mean, it's Spitfire. They're insane. I got to give them some kind of credit. Um, yeah. The Shanghai Dragons took a map off of them in Week 3, if that tells you anything. Oh. One map still is just like, really? Really? That's not good. Yeah, that you even choke for a second and give a game up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat the Philadelphia Fusion 3-1. So they were still doing well for the most part. It was just these games here and there that just they missed out on. And uh, I'm trying to find who they lost again. I'm trying to find. Uh, they beat San Francisco Shock first week as well as the Valiant. They beat Fuel. They beat the Gladiators week two, week three. They beat the Shanghai Dragons. And then we beat the Philadelphia Fusion. So they have a perfect record so far. Then they lose to Excelsior. They lose to Spitfire. All these good teams. Uh, week 5, they lost against Houston. And then they beat the Florida Mayhem 3-1. But their map count wasn't good enough. And that's why they weren't able to get in. And Philly went over them. So that map count, hmm. it, it really does come into play. It's uh, it's really crazy. I can never um, just take a game off. I can tell that. It's especially been, against the Shanghai insane. Dragons. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on, Soul. I've got one of your skins. Like, I'm trying to represent. And they do me dirty. Got them on my Zen that's skin. That's what happens that's when you try and get hyped about a team, dude. When you try and stand behind the team. Now that... I'm actually surprised Clutch hasn't let me down because I've been on that train since week five, going, you know, mm -hmm. kind of skipping back to League of Legends and LCS. I've been on the Clutch hi gaming hype train since week five, week four, and I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for it to happen. There's going to be like completely choke, and I'm terrified of it because I've been saying over and over, this team's top three easy. Like on, mm -hmm. on their best day, they're easily top three, if not top two team in NALCS. So, oh, yeah. 
hopefully that time does not come. At the very least, I want to see them in the finals, but I also don't expect them to be 100 Thieves. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I hijacked that thread. I was just kind of <laughs> that chain of thought. I was just thinking of how basically Dynasty and Clutch can share similar fates. It's mm-hmm. just a matter of what happens. Yeah, for sure. And it kind of put things into perspective. The ending standings. Philadelphia, so it was New York Excelsior in first with a, what was it, a 9 and 1 record. They only won or lost one match. Uh, London Spitfire second. They only lost two matches, so 8 and 2. Then it's Philadelphia Fusion third. They're 7 and 3. And then Seoul Dynasty, that's also 7 and 3. The map differential was 3. Oh, wow. Fusion so... had plus 12, and Dynasty had plus 9. So all Seoul had to do was not lose those maps to Shanghai Dragons and Mayhem, and then one more map somewhere in there, mm-hmm. or taking just one extra map on Dallas Fuel, and they would have tied. Just any, and, wow. on, yeah, just anything, anywhere. Like they could that have done been it. insane. But uh, they, uh, they, they failed. Um, and another team that was in the playoff running as well that kind of surprised everyone: the LA Gladiators. Have just they've gotten so much better with their new uh, tank player Fissure. They got him, I think, this stage, um, and they've just been coming up and coming. Like they've been doing really, really well. Uh, they were six and four. They had a plus nine map differential. Um, this is kind of how it played out. If we look at, so keep in mind, those three teams are just right there, competing for third in the last uh, week. So we'll go to the schedule, stage two, week five. Um, the LA Gladiators played the Philadelphia Fusion the very first game. At that point, they are tied. And whoever wins basically is in the foot race with Dynasty for third place. And that's when the Fusion beat them 3-1. And that kind of bumped the Gladiators out. But it really could have gone any way. Like, if Gladiators yeah. would have won, we could have seen the Gladiators going against... It's just it's crazy to see how everything kind of played out. And that kind of leads us to our next topic is the Philly story. They did... Like, everything just kind of happened perfectly for them. If you kind of looked at it, you didn't think the Fusion were going to get in. Um, Dynasty was going to be playing against the Outlaws. Dynasty, right now at that point, had a better record than Fusion, or they were tied, but it looked like they were going to end up beating the Outlaws with Outlaws' recent results. They were going to be, I think, 8-2 and two or... Yeah, I think they would have been 8-2 and two if they would have been beaten the Outlaws, but they fall 3-1. So it's just it's that close, like just millimeters away from making playoffs, yeah. and they lose to the Houston Outlaws, which Houston Outlaws are great most of the time, but it's just not been there. With their downfall, yeah, it makes it. They've just been on the downfall, the and then it just kind of kicks soul to the curb, and it opens up for their North American brothers. Um, so yeah, I was gonna say Houston just had to take one more top tier team with them, like just yeah. bring them down to the dirt with them. Yeah, and then we see, and this is just how close it is. Like, this is just crazy. Uh, Soul Dynasty beat uh, Fort of Mayhem, and then the Philadelphia Fusion played the Los Angeles Valiant, and that game went to five games. Fusion edged it out 3-2, just barely getting that. So, and I think, let me see, it went Fusion wins, LA win, Fusion wins, LA wins, and then Fusion won the game five on Ilios. So it was just back and forth the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the games were really, really close. Like game one, it was 3-2. Game two was kind of a wipe for Los Angeles Valance, 0-2. And then it was a wipe right back for the Fusion, 3-0. And then game five was – or game four, sorry, was 2-3 in favor of Los Angeles Valance. And then it was 2-1. So mm-hmm. it went to game five, map three. It went all the way. and It went as far as it possibly could, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's insanity. And wow. that is not even the end of their story because then they make it to playoffs where they face the London Spitfire. The London Spitfire have looked formidable. It's just they're insane. I mean former stage one champion. Exactly. I would, I would hope that team looks pretty good going into stage two. Exactly. Playoffs. And that match went to five and the Philadelphia Fusion edged it out three two. Uh the first game it was oh one in favor of the Spitfire, second game two O in favor of Philly, 2-0 in favor of Philly, and then it was 3-4 in favor of London, so that game actually went to overtime. And then finally, they won 3-2 on the last map. So, like, the closest it really could have been, honestly. like just... The classic Cloud9 takes the first game in a best-of-five to lose the series. 
basically. Yeah, so Cloud it was nine, just... If you, if you win your first two games in a best of five against Cloud9, you've already lost. But if Cloud9 beats you in the first game, you've already won. It's <laughs> they, they are the true counter-logic gaming of esports. <laughs> For sure. But yeah, so somehow Philly is, like, no one saw this coming. Like, everyone was like, Fusion are great, but it's a Spitfire. And they, they surprised a lot of people, including me and about everyone I know. So that brings well, us to exciting. the finals. That's great to hear that a team is um, performing well, mm -hmm. and the parody in Overwatch League is something I'm really looking forward to. It's mm -hmm. clearly Spitfire and Excel have been the best teams, but, but other teams are nipping at their heels, and it's not just the London and New York show. There's other teams that are very clearly good, and if they slip up at all or these other teams improve at an exponential rate, they can very easily dethrone these two teams, and I'm excited to see if that does end up happening before playoffs, mm -hmm. like before real playoffs after all the stages. For sure. And so that just transitioned us into our final topic, the stage two winners, um, and this kind of goes with the Philly story as well. Philly versus the New York Excel. Excel have been just super dominant, even more so than uh, Spitfire. Uh, they, were, they only lost one match the entire split. Like, that's just crazy to me um and it, it looked really really good for philly starting out right off the gate they win the first game 2-1 second game they win 2-1 again they're up 2-0 they need one game and they are the stage two champions like they were this close and then they get reverse sweeped game three New was York said we had it happen to us last stage and we ain't letting it happen to them again no, basically they... and that was the fear of everyone watching like it's happening again <laughs> excel what is going on but they put their foot down big daddy pine came in i don't even know if he came in that game i don't remember but uh game three was super close it was zero one on a control point map so the most points you can get is two but mm -hmm. they shut fusion out and they were able to just get that one point um game four was a close one it was one two um and then we go to game five it goes the distance it was two three um, in favor oh, Excel. So it was just throughout the entire series, it was just one of those fun ones that was just constantly just back and forth and back and forth. And finally, we crowned our stage two champion, the New York Excelsior. So they retained their rightful place of first place in the stage, and then they are the stage two champions as well. So congratulations to the New York Excelsior. I love watching them play. I hate it when they win because they're just that top dog, but they're just honestly a joy to watch they're just so crazy sabiola be pine they just have an amazing amazing roster so i mean like i always say every league needs patriots every <laughs> league needs a cleveland browns overwatch league has that in the shanghai dragons and they have that in the new york excelsior for sure and just to kind of look at the bigger picture here and this is something that's going to blow your mind uh so for the entire of entirety of overwatch league we got new york excel in first they are 18 and 2 in matches they've only lost two matches in two stages oh wow they have a map differential of 46 plus 46 okay that is just crazy and they've only had two ties and 19 losses who's the next highest so the next team is going to be the london spitfire they are 15 and 5 for the two stages so that's still pretty good their map differential is plus 35 so it's not too far it's a whole 10 though uh, yeah, I and, say, that's still a large amount though it's not like mm -hmm. it's unmeasurable but at the same time there is a very clear difference between a team that comes in and performs ev like every day to a consistent level they can mm -hmm. still be beaten but For they sure. very consistently are going to be the best team oh yeah and then like we said that's a big differential it gets even bigger got soul dynasty they're in third still they are 14 and 6 with a plus 18 map differential which it drops off a whole it almost drops a whole lot the next team that's this is really really interesting the next team is philadelphia fusion with that crazy run they're 13 and 7 and they have a plus 8 map differential oh boy that's insane it's a huge jump huge jump now it's kind of funny because houston outlaws they were so good in stage one they're in fifth because of how good they were in stage one they're 12 and 8 which is okay that's okay um their map differential is plus 17 so they're right up on par with the soul dynasty with their map differential yeah. they just uh didn't put the wins together unfortunately huh 
which is really really interesting. It's just they had so many losses within that last few weeks at the stage two. Yeah. It just that they just couldn't end up keeping their placement. I mean, the beginning of stage two, they were third. They were above Dynasty. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, just because of points. Huh. So it's actually it's uh, crazy. After that, we got That's we'll just kind of go through this real idea. quick. We got Boston Uprising sixth, Los Angeles Valiant seventh, Los Angeles Gladiators eighth. Uh, the Shock at 9th, Fuel at 10th, Mayhem at 11th, and we got the good old Shanghai Dragons 0-20 with a negative 65 map differential. He... Well, <laughs> as much as I love the idea of franchising, uh, Shanghai Dragons is that perfect example of why relegations were a great thing. I hope they get their stuff together, but... Mm -hmm. It's not looking good for that team. It's not looking good for investors. I really hope to see them become more com competitive in the next three stages. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's sad. Just to give you an idea, they have eight map wins, seventy three map losses, and one tie. Hey, at least they tied a game. At least at one point they were equal to a team. Could you imagine losing seventy three times? Well, Which it's no is... wonder that no one wants to come. None of the Chinese players wants to come join this team because <laughs> it's it's Better a lose shit. lose situation. Unless mm -hmm. you unless you take that team all the way to finals, you join a team and you very obviously won't be able to change them enough to win a championship. Mm -hmm. And if you don't end up performing at least to carry them to middle of the pack, people will tear you apart too. Like there's, it's no wonder that team needs to just rebuild, like blow their whole team up and rebuild. Yeah, for sure, it's. It's devastating, but uh, hey, it must be. It must we're be heartbreaking uh, for those players. Oh, you know it, but hey, we're we're rooting for them. Shanghai, you're gonna get your first win. Uh, do it against some cool team like the Excelsior, Spitfire, or the Dynasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make yourselves look really, really cool, and then just go from there. But yeah, uh, that's. I got one piece of news that I didn't plan out. I just remembered this. Um, the Overwatch League, or not Overwatch League, but the Overwatch World Cup was just announced this week. So they're going to be doing that this year as well. They did it last year. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think South Korea won. It was South Korea versus Canada in the finals, and the U.S. got third, if I remember correctly. But is this similar to a IEM event for League of Legends, or is this similar to a Worlds event for League of Legends? Is this something hosted by Overwatch League again, or is this, this is something... Be something that's kind of separate, and all the teams are going to be there? So this is think like literally just Olympics. This is each oh, okay. each region has their own team. Um, it doesn't matter what um, di uh, organization you're on, anything like that. It just matters what region you're in. Um, the whole how they're doing it is a little odd. I don't really understand it completely yet. Uh, basically, there's going to be a coach or there's going to be a team manager that Blizzard picks. The manager picks the coach and their um, what do they call it? Uh, basically, their social media guy. I would is in my mind how I think about it. Basically, just a person that kind of relays everything to the public, um, media their manager, PR representative, kind of something like that. It's I don't remember the name. Community member. That's what it's called. Their community okay. member, um, and that's actually voted on by the community from the each region. Um, huh. And then from there, the and this actually goes into like matchmaking and like competitive overwatch like in the actual game this is completely outside of overwatch league like there can be a non-professional player playing on a top team or for one of these actual teams exciting. it's like the top 100 players in the region and then from there solo queue player is that is mm. now getting a play with all your heroes that you see on twitch every day yeah so it's the top 100 players i think if i remember correctly that are in grandmaster um from there the coach and the organization manager or whatever is going to relegate them into like di or diplomat them and what is the word delegate them to different teams I d <laughs> okay so i delegate Broke them to different teams oh yeah and uh basically those teams will all play against each other qualify and then the best players will be picked out of those teams during the qualifiers and it's for each region so it's definitely going to be very very interesting to see how that all works together um I'm really excited about it, honestly. It's a very interesting Exciting. concept. But yeah, it's basically like the Olympics. Um, each region has their own, so we'll see it's some exciting. from France. You can maybe and... see prospect players end up showing up on that stage, and maybe they'll end up getting picked up in the Overwatch League. Maybe this can solve Shanghai's problems. It'd definitely be, it'd be awesome for sure. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. That's about all the news I have. Do you have anything you have to add before we get out of here? 
that is the LCS picture. Like I said, semifinal is going on in basically all the regions this weekend. Mm -hmm. I will say that LPL and Vietnam both celebrate Chinese New Year this year, so okay. they're going to be a couple weeks behind. They'll start their playoffs soon. Okay. Just keep your eyes on all the LCS and LCK channels to see some really good League of Legends because all of them, all of them are playing super well, super good teams. All of the uh, leagues have a lot of parity, even in the bottom tier LCK playoffs, we're seeing the World Finals rematch. Mm -hmm. It's insane how good each region is doing the split, at the very least among themselves. So sure. keep your eyes on all the uh, Twitch channels that starts this weekend, and you're in for some really good League of Legends. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's all we got here at Recall. Uh, my name is Brennan. You can follow me on Twitter at BrennanH underscore. I'm joined with Trent. You can follow him on Twitter at Avius Gaming. And uh, we appreciate you watching, as always. You can subscribe, like the video. Tell us what you think about it. Tell us if we suck. Tell us if we're awesome. We uh, did take out all the highlights to try to make this condense it down a little bit. We still went, I think, about 40 minutes or so. But um, So try in a new format. Let us know what you all mm -hmm. think. And that's about it. So thanks, guys, again. Take care. This has been Recall. Bye.